Hi, I'm Wendy Chun. I'm a medical geneticist here at Columbia University, and I have the real honor and privilege of being able to work with many families and individuals that have rare genetic conditions. The first part of that uh, relationship is being able to first figure out what that condition is. So we work together to come up with a diagnosis. And then once we have a diagnosis, it's to be able to work with many other families, even around the world, to be able to learn from each other, uh, be able to come up with best practices, uh, understand what's working best right now. But we don't stop there. We want to be able to look forward to the new answers, the new opportunities for the future, develop new treatments, new supports, um, and be able to take and fill the gaps in research that we need to be able to get there. So with my work, we've been able to identify the new genes for many, many different conditions, many of which are conditions affecting children, oftentimes neurodevelopmental conditions. Um, as we do that, we need to understand enough about what the gene does and how changes in that gene affect the way a child develops or the way their brain works or the way their body works to be able to eventually come up with new treatments, new supports. So in doing that, one of the first steps is oftentimes uh, I think of it as a toolbox, being able to fill the toolbox with tools that we need to be able to do the right experiments. Sometimes that's with information from families or data. Sometimes it's actual cells from individuals so that we can do experiments in the laboratory. Sometimes it's making models. Oftentimes these are furry little four-footed uh, models, uh, mice in other words, to be able to be a parallel to what we have in the children. Um, and then eventually to be able to find molecules, be they um, pills, uh, similar chemicals to pills that you would take, or even brand new techniques and technologies like gene therapy or what we call oligonucleotides to be able to um, fix the gene or be able to help the gene work better. So CTNNV1 is one of these relatively rare genetic conditions, although I think that it's really underdiagnosed. I think there are many, many more individuals, children and adults who have this condition out there, and we are just beginning literally the tip of the iceberg to understand who they are. This condition is being supported by a really amazing group of parents um, that are acting uh, through their groups, literally act, uh, to be able to understand the condition better and to think about some of those treatments that can evolve. Already around the world, there are over 180 individuals with this condition, and my expectation is that this is probably going to be something around the order of 1 in 50,000 individuals who have this condition, but it's just a matter of finding them, banding together, learning from each other, and being able to come up with these solutions for tomorrow. One of our big gaps in the community is that we actually don't have very many adults, in fact, probably countable uh, on a hand in terms of the number of adults that know this condition who are out there. Um, it's an equal opportunity condition. We don't see it just in one part of the world or just one ethnic group. Um, it really is equal opportunity around the world. We just don't know about all those people because they haven't had testing. Critically important in this is to be able to see adults with this condition and to be able to understand how this evolves, if there are things that change, if there are particular, just by trial and error, things that have worked really well, or maybe things to avoid in the future. And that transfer of knowledge, that sharing of knowledge, all of us coming together is really what's going to be helpful for the next generation of children growing up with this condition and the children are being diagnosed earlier and earlier, which is a good thing because it gives us even more opportunities to help them, support them, whether it be through educational strategies, um, things in terms of communication uh, assistance, eventually medications and treatments like gene therapy to support what we hope will be a life of health as well as happiness.